This story pertains to three girls in school, in the dead of winter, when it's quite cool. One day they were browsing the library, for nothing special, just books of sundry. Finding nothing, one girl's aggravation, was squelched by long-suffered consummation. She'd come across an old and tattered book. She turned to the others, Look here, look, look! For the pages, clad in cartography, showed the grayish blanket's geography. The bookish girl with thick glasses spoke now. I love to find the grayish wool, but how? Leah was her name, the nerd's paragon, but it was common for her to be gone. While just known at school for being a nerd, her life was quite dark, or so I have heard. Her brains made her the CIA's asset, but her IQ was just one small facet. Of her multifarious employments, for her status meant cr frequent deployment. Oh, oh, I know how, said the second girl. Percy Jacks. She gave her hair a twirl. Now here was the fangirl to top them all. She once tackled Harry Styles in a mall. Indeed, our Mary Sue was very proud. She could pick Chris Hemsworth out of a crowd. But her fandom love was out of control. It consumed her like a big gaping hole. In fact, she only agreed to do this slog so she could write about it in her blog. Oh, the wool, my country's quite fond of that. Though foreign, she was by no means a brat. Jane, the third girl, peculiar in her ways, knew knots of Iowa all through her stay. But in her own customs, she was well versed, for in the line for the crown, she was first. She came from the Honorable Bennets, but while here, she was merely a tenant. Through what was by far her greatest downfall, it seemed even her own feet made her fall. Okay, gang, looks like we have a mystery on our hands. Do we get a mystery machine, too? Let me see the map. It looks like we're gonna go to a place with the sheep. Well, not necessarily. I mean, the wool can be part of any medium to large sized livestock animal. And since we're in Iowa, that would mean cows. So we need to find somewhere where there's a lot of cows and look for a gray one. No, the wool's not going to be on a living cow, idiot. It's already going to be sheared. So we're going to have to find a place where cows were. Oh, oh, I know where that is. Oh, come on, I'll drive. You're going to navigate? Is there a problem? <laughs> no, no, just a little bit of irony down the wrong pipe. Let's go, vlogger. It's colder than hot out here, Jane. What were you thinking? Well, we know the wool is out here somewhere. We just have to look for it. We can't focus on anything out here in this cold. We need to do something to take our minds off the impending hypothermia. We could, like, tell stories. That's an excellent idea, Mary Sue. I've got a story. I remember that one day. The one time that would change my life forever. The one time where I finally realized what mercy could mean. It was a Tuesday afternoon. I was getting myself a diet due because I had a terrible cold. Everybody was kung fu fighting Those kids were fast as lightning In fact it was a little bit frightening But they fought with expert timing There were funky China men From funky Chinatown It's over Dr. Disgustable you, Your you, evil days are over You must have mercy on me why should I lend you my mercy, doctor? I, I am, I am your, your, your father. Hey, that sounds like Star Wars. I know. I know her. I know. I go with the latter. Blogger, what are our coordinates?
What? Where are we? I think the better question is, where are we going? Why, to Neverland. But, Peter, how do we get to Neverland? Fly, of course. Fly? Stop! Collaborate and listen. I did. I understood that reference. And I understood that reference. Referenceception. Roger, I asked you a question. It's your responsibility to answer. No service. Tough stop. Figure it out. Obviously, I have been trying. I have a lot of responsibilities to my internet friends. You know, I kind of live the thug life. I need my internet connection for more than just coordinates. Yeah, you guys should totally see my room sometime. I've got an entire wall covered in 1D posters, brony pillows, a five seconds of summer CD sitting on a pedestal, Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, Hulk, Spider-Man, and Avengers comic books with matching action figures, the Enterprise ship that I made out of Legos in the fourth grade, uh, ooh, a life-size Benedict Cumberbatch fat head that sits on my bookshelf, yeah, my bookshelf is full of Harry Potter, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the Hunger Games trilogy, a massive amount of CDs, my collector's edition of Star Wars exclusively on Blu-ray. Oh, I almost forgot about all my Disney movies on VHS because I'm a total hipster. I only have Disney on VHS. Speaking of singing shows, I have all five seasons of Glee and I have the next three pre-ordered. Not that I know that much about Glee, but aren't those even not even in production? <sighs> I know, and it's so upsetting. Oh my god, I've been trying to leak some of the episodes, but I've only been able to hack into airport security and watch Harry Styles do nothing for seven hours. Isn't that illegal? Uh, your point? It's against the law and it's wrong. Well, 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 you're tacky and I hate you. Anyway. I didn't even tell you guys about my favorite wall. Oh my gosh. This wall is flanked on both sides by lamps. One is in the shape of Poseidon's trident with little riptides engraved in it, and the other side is a six foot TARDIS lamp, and in between is my favorite collection of restraining orders. How many restraining orders do you have exactly? Right now I have 137 restraining orders. 93 are Americans, 36 are European. I have five from Australia, and two from Spain, and one from Canada. Uh, how many restraining orders can one person get until they actually end up in jail? The limit does not exist! Well, I did have to spend a week at a mental institution in Hollywood, but that's not for me, that's for show. For show? Ripley's Believe It or Not. I mean, I am in the Guinness Book of World Records for having the most restraining orders in one night at 86. I mean, do you guys want to see it? Oh my gosh, it's in my phone. It's, it's in my Twitter, Tumblr, and Pinterest bios. See? Do you guys want to hear it? Twas the night before twerking became a word, and not a family member was at the hotel, not even my mom. I was on Twitter updating my 54,097 followers that I was a mere mile away from the site of the 2013 VMA Awards show when I heard the wrestling of men outside my room. So I armed myself with my blue lightsaber and ninja rolled to the roar and listened to that conversation. So they took said something about access to the VMAs and I was like, OMG, I, I can't even. These people are going to be at the VMAs. So I snuck out the door and mischievously stole one of the guy's keys. Stealing, breathing gently as we may. Every step with caution, feeling we will softly sneak away. Where are my keys? Where are they? Where are my keys? So the next morning came, and I was like totally preparing to meet my future husbands. And seriously, limos were like lined up from Timbuktu. And they reached all the way back to our hotel, so like loser people were lined up to see them, but they couldn't because they didn't have cool access like I did. So I followed some of the men in black. So their secret entrance and easily made it through. 
So then I snuck downstairs to where all the axe dressing rooms were and started with Taylor Swift. Ugh, I don't like Taylor Swift because she totally ruined Harry. I mean, Harry is like the most innocent guy. Like, ugh. So I ran into her room and screamed, Haler, how about hell no? And ran out of the room and darted to the bathroom because all the guys were men. After waiting for like ever, I went back out and went to the cast of the Avengers and like totally fangled. I mean, I was in a room with Robert Downey Jr., Tony Stark, and Iron Man at the same time. Oh, and those times were so much better in person. Then I ran to the British section and met Ed Sheeran, Cher Lloyd, and One Direction. I nearly fainted when I saw Niles Gorge's size, but then Paul, their body hard, well, he came in. But I got a quick pick with him and ran out before someone caught me. I didn't really find anyone else after that. By that time, the show had already started, and Austin Mahoney and Adriana Grande were already performing, so I, like, found a spot next to Tom Hiddleston and faked that I was lost so I could sit with them. I thought that most of the show went pretty well, but then, you know what, it was Miley's turn to perform, and I was just, just so inspired that I jumped up on stage with her and I danced all night to the best song ever. But, I guess there was too many people hating on me for getting inside her access that they called the police and stopped filming me because, like, they see me rolling, they hating. <sighs> Obviously, I went easily to the police, and then everyone I met wanted to meet, that wanted to remember that they met me, so they like filed legal documents, which is totes fetch. Fetch? Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. So, uh, what was the point of that story? Oh, God, is, if you're not invited, don't go. <laughs> no, it, I mean, at least I got to beat up Justin Bieber. I mean, I would have beat up the one or two, but they weren't invited. And they didn't go. Point proven. It sounds like this was a very difficult time for you, man. <laughs> Are you kidding? That was the best night of my life. Well, your um, <laughs> adventure reminded me a bit of a story my father used to tell me, and still does tell me. I find myself afraid of my future. Okay, this is gonna be a while. Why don't I go sit sit down?
but inevitable betrayal. Ah! I'm on my way from misery to happiness to be. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm on my way from misery to happiness.